What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to visualize decision trees of decision tree classifiers in Python so let us get right into it. Alright so for this tutorial today I'm going to use a Jupyter notebook however you can also run that code in an ordinary Python script you can use whatever development environment you like. I just prefer using Jupyter Notebooks for data science work because then we can run individual code cells, we can load the data in one cell, we can process the data in another cell, we can build them all in another cell and we can visualize results in another cell so we don't need to run all of the code if we just want to change a small fraction of the code, if we just want to execute a small fraction of the code. So we're going to need for this tutorial today two libraries, obviously because we are talking about decision tree classifiers and visualizing them. So we need one library, sklearn, scikit-learn for the actual decision tree classifier, and we need matplotlib in order to visualize this uh, classifier. So you're going to have to install via the command line by just typing pip install, or if you're using an anaconda environment, just conda install, and then scikit-learn and matplotlib like that. And the first thing we want to do is we want to get some data that we can actually train a decision tree classifier on. So we need to have some some classification data that says, okay, um, we have a bunch of classes, we have a bunch of features, and based on those features, we can predict the classes. So for that, we're going to say from sklearn dot data sets, and you can just pick one here. So you just type load, for example, and here you have a bunch of data sets. I'm going to use the iris data set. Now you can also go with the breast cancer data set. I have a tutorial on that already, how to predict um, or how to classify breast cancer. But uh, the iris data set is probably better for this video because then we can see uh, a smaller tree because we only have three classes and only four features. So the tree is not too big, so we can actually see what it's doing. Um, and we now say data equals load iris. So basically the iris data set is just a data set for classifying uh, iris types. So flower types essentially based on width and length of the individual parts of the flower. Um, nothing too fancy. So we can actually print that. You can see we have a data array. Um, we have a target array, which is basically the class. And then we also have the target names, which are the actual types of flowers. And then we have somewhere here, where is it? Uh, I'm not sure where it is, but we can see here that we have also the individual feature names. And all we want to do here is we want to say x and y equals data data and data target. So that is that. And now we can train a simple decision tree classifier on that data like uh, every other classifier would just say from sklearn dot tree import decision tree classifier we say clf equals decision tree classifier clf fit x and y so the typical scikit learn process for training any model k nearest neighbors uh random forest decision tree classifier sv um, so linear svc or something like that we basically just fit it onto the data now the interesting thing and the good thing about decision tree classifiers is that they actually show us they're actually quite transparent. If we train a neural network or if we train a random forest classifier, we cannot really see as humans what the decision making process is. So it's somewhat like a black box, you know, you put stuff in and you get something out and maybe it makes sense, maybe it's quite accurate, but you can't really see the decision making process. How does this classifier come to the conclusion that this class is the right one, even if it's true? Whereas with decision tree classifiers, we can see that because decision tree classifiers are literally decision trees where you can see, okay, this feature has to be above or below a certain value. If yes, go left. If no, go right and so on and so forth. And this is actually quite cool. So we can visualize that to see what the decision making process is. And the simplest way to do that is doing that in the command line using text. So you don't have to visualize it as a plot. <clears throat> Sorry. And if you want to do that, you just type from sklearn import tree, and then you print tree dot, uh, or actually, what was it? Tree dot export text, and we pass the classifier. So here we have then the unlabeled features without the feature names, because obviously the feature names are part of this um, variable, but in the x and y values, we cannot see those, and the classifier is only fitted on x and y. 
So here you can see the decision tree in a textual representation. However, this is not the best way to visualize a tree because it's, um, yeah, the, the overview is not as good as it should be. Um, so we can use actually an actual plot that can be displayed with matplotlib. And for that, what we do is we say figure equals, and I think for that, first of all, we need to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then we type figure equals plt figure. <clears throat> and the fix size is going to be 50 and 30 like that. And then essentially we just call the function tree dot plot underscore tree. And we want to plot the classifier. The feature names are the data dot feature names, the target names, uh, or actually the class name, sorry, is the data dot target names and then filled equals true. And I think this should already. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we don't want to print that, we can just store this into an empty variable like that. Uh, and now you can see that this is a visualization of the decision tree. Um, so essentially, what we see here is on the top, we see the uh, distinction. So we split on that threshold if um, the pedal or pedal length is less than or less or equal to 2.45. Um, we go to the left, otherwise we go to the right. And uh, based on that, we have now here another node that again has uh, the threshold. Uh, if the width is less or equal to 1.75, we go here. If the length is less than 4.95, and so on and so forth. So we basically split on that threshold here, we take one feature and say, okay, if that value is below or above that, go left, go right. Um, and then we have a bunch of other values here. So genie actually is an impurity measure. So genie basically means um, how pure is the data that we have here. And this is related to the value um, to the value value that we have here, because this value tells us how many instances of which class do we have here. So in the beginning, in this root node, we have 50, 50, 50. So for each class, we have 50 instances. If we go now to the left, so if that um, characteristic here, if that threshold is met, if that uh, condition is met, we go to the left and here we only have one class. So this is 100% pure, we only have a single class, this is uh, a leaf node. And because of that, the genie measure is 0.0, .0 because it is, it has zero impurity. If you go to the right here, you have 50% impurity because you have 50% of one class, 50% of another class. And uh, this is like 50% impurity. And then you split it up again. And you can see here, we have a pretty low impurity because we have 49% of one class, uh, not not percent 49 instances of one class, five instances of another class. So it's quite pure, but not exactly pure. This one here 47 and one uh, means that the second class, um, or the instances, the 48 samples that we have in that node are 47 uh, 47 of those are of class two. And one is not of class two. And this is quite pure. So we have a very low impurity, you can see how that works. So the more clear a node is when it comes to the distribution of the individual classes, the lower the genie value, the higher the purity, the lower the impurity. And samples basically just tells you how many instances this node applies to. So you can see here, this criteria here is enough to extract all of those. So we have 50% uh, or 50 instances here. And of those 150, we have the other 100 here. And those are split up again into 46, 55, and so on. And then at the bottom, we have the class um, yeah, that this node is focusing on, if you want. So that is the best way to visualize the decision tree, in my opinion. Now, one last thing that we can do, and this is uh, a little bit more complicated to actually get an image from is we can export uh, using the export graph this function. So we can say tree dot export graph this and then we can export a classifier, we can specify an out file um, by opening a new file and calling this I don't know, tree dot dot. So a dot file, that's uh, the extension dot. Um, we open that in writing mode. And we say the feature names are data feature names like that. Now, if we do that, this works, but we're going to have to 
somehow get that file now and turn it into an image because that is a text file uh, or a dot file actually. So you can install the dot utility on your command line so you can type dot and then convert it. You can just Google how to do that. I personally don't do that. So what you can also do is you can go online and just um, go to a website and type dot to PNG and then you can convert this file. So here, for example, we have the website onlineconvertfree.com. You can use whatever website you want if it works. Um, and here I upload the tree.dot file and then I convert it to PNG. And then once this is done, I can download it. I can save it on my desktop. I can click on this and we can see here that I have now the image with the decision tree and this works as well as you can see. So this is another way to do that. Um, yeah, so my favorite way is to do it like that. Sometimes you're going to only have a command line. So that is a good option. And if you want to export it as a dot file, for whatever reason, you can do that here as well with the export graphics. I think there is also a Python graphics module that can take that and display that in some sort. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I think that is the most um, basic way to do that. You just have the classifier and you use the plot tree function. And then you have this beautiful decision tree that shows you how decisions are made. And of course, you can now take that decision making process. And if you notice, for example, okay, when this value is less or equal to 2.45, this is automatically Satosa, then you know that as a human now, and you can also do that manually, you can extract some knowledge from that decision tree. So this makes kind of sense. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.